Hello, and welcome to the EduTalk series hosted by Biotone, Biotone Edu Partner Program, and Massage Industry Experts. With the challenges continuing to face massage schools, students, and practicing therapists during COVID-19, the EduTalk series supports virtual learning by connecting you with industry experts who will share their knowledge and expertise on topics not only to discuss in class, but for career success. Tonight's expert, well, before I introduce tonight's expert, I'd like to introduce Jackie Halderman, Marketing Director at the AHI Institute and the Ambrosia Institute, who will just give you a quick little update before she has to leave the, the meeting tonight. Go ahead, Jackie. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Um, and I apologize in advance, something has come up and I am gonna have to have a hard sign off at 6.30, so don't sign off when I do, I will probably still be going. Um, in the next few days, um, you will be receiving an email from me, so please watch your inbox. It'll have more information about Dr. Carrie D'Ambrosio. And for those of you who have not heard Carrie before, you are in for a real treat tonight as he talks to you about and provide you an introduction to total body balancing. And at the end of this evening's seminar, you'll meet um, Elise Dowler, who is um, one of the colleagues and on our team at the D'Ambrosian Institute. So I'm gonna turn it back to Donnell so she can um, properly introduce Carrie. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. <clears throat> Tonight's expert, as you know, is Carrie D'Ambrosio, president of D'Ambrosio Institute author of Positional Release Therapy. Carrie is an osteopath, a physical therapist, a doctor of oriental medicine, and an international lecturer. <clears throat> Let's listen and learn as Carrie introduces total body balancing, a reminder of how important it is to look at the total influences of the body when local with or local orthopedic complaints. Dr. Carey will use a case study on an injured right shoulder. He will use the case study to review what a shoulder needs to heal, the total body influences on the shoulder and how total body balancing works. Now tonight for the best view of Carrie's presentation, please in the upper right hand corner, switch to speaker view. And in the <clears throat> excuse me, the lower nav bar, there's a chat box and feel free to chat questions to Carrie during the talk, which will be answered at the end. With that, I turn it over to Carrie. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And we're ready to listen and learn. Thanks to now. All right, so welcome to this uh, total body balancing introduction. We have about 20, 25 minutes uh, to get through this. And as I was putting this together, we're addressing massage therapists. Some of you may be students, some of you may be professionals out there for a while. So a key question is why should I learn you know, total body balancing? And a better question would be, how do I know when to use it? So I'm gonna kind of go through these different topics. One of the best ways to, you know, to go through a modality like this is uh, a case study like Danelle mentioned. And I thought the right shoulder would be a good example. Now, when we look at a shoulder, if a patient were to come into your office with a shoulder dysfunction, the first question you wanna ask is, well, how does a shoulder heal? Because this is gonna help you decide, what do I need to evaluate? What do I need to treat? So one of the first things, there's gonna be three of them, is it needs proper tissue motion. And this is physiology. So our bodies are composed of four types of tissues. We have muscle tissue, you have skeletal, smooth and cardiac, you have nerve tissue, you have glial cells and neurons. You have epithelial tissue, which forms your skin, the lining of your cavities and your blood vessels. And we also have connective tissue, uh, fascia. Fat is a connective tissue. Uh, bones are connective tissue, cartilage, ligaments, capsules, so all these different structures. So if we look at a shoulder, obviously we're going to have skin around that shoulder. There's also going to be epithelial tissue 
which is the inner lining right here of all the blood vessels, uh, the arteries, the veins, but also the lymphatics of the shoulder. So they're there. There's also gonna be muscle tissue, skeletal muscle tissue all around the shoulder, but also right in here is smooth muscle, which is in the blood vessels and the lymphatic vessels. So we have all these different types of tissue. We have nerve tissue, we have brain, spinal cord, and we have nerves that go from the spinal cord to the shoulder complex. We also have connective tissue. We have the superficial and deep fascia around the muscles. We have capsule, we have ligaments. A bone is a connective tissue. Fat is a connective tissue. Cartilage is a connective tissue. So these are all the tissues. So these tissues have to have freedom of motion. You have to have functional mobility in order to be able to heal properly. Now, the second thing that we need is we need supply, tissue supply to these tissues. And the first thing we need is arterial blood supply. So one of the things I had to learn when I was in osteopathic school are supply lines. In this case, we have a shoulder. How does blood get from the heart to the shoulder? And what does it carry? It carries oxygen and nutrition. So if you look down here with all these different cells, each of these cells of those four types of tissues are gonna need blood supply. And this will help that area heal. We also need energy supply. I'm a doctor of oriental medicine. So energy starts in the chest, you know, it flows down the arm. So it goes directly to the shoulder and then it comes up the back of the arm up to the shoulder and head. It flows down the back of your body and then up the front of your body to your chest area again. So this whole chest area, shoulder area gets energy flow at the beginning. And this is gonna carry a lot of uh, chi circulation. Now, the other thing the shoulder needs is it needs nerve supply, somatic nerve supply from the brain, down the spinal cord, to the somatic nerves, which supply that shoulder complex. Another nerve supply it needs is the autonomic nervous system. So this is the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system exists, if you look on this chart, between T1 and L2. It's right where the rib comes in and attaches to the transverse process. You have a sympathetic chain on either side. The parasympathetic system exists down here in the sacrum, S234, and also up here in the cranium. So cranial nerve 10, your vagus nerve is a big one. Now, why is this autonomic nervous system so important? It's because if you look at the anatomy of an artery, we have three key components. We have the endothelial cells, which we talked about, and then right in here in the middle layer is smooth muscle. And smooth muscle is under the control of the autonomic nervous system. When you're in fight or flight, what happens is blood gets diverted away from your organs of digestion to your muscles for fight or flight. Well, how does it do this? It does this through vasomotion, which is the autonomic nervous system contracting the smooth muscle to either decrease blood supply to organs of digestion or dilating it to the muscles for fight or flight. How it applies to you is if you have a patient who's in sympathetic overload, this could restrict the healing process. So one of the things we do is we look at these particular areas. So this is the supply to the tissues of the shoulder, arterial blood supply, energy supply, and nerve supply. This is a supply line, probably one of the most important things. The third component uh, for tissue healing of the shoulder is going to be tissue drainage okay, from these four tissues. So we can look at venous drainage. Okay? So if you look at this diagram down here, each of these cells of the tissues of the shoulder need blood supply, but also they need drainage from this area and usually venous drainage. What happens, which is interesting, is that inside your arterial system are proteins and proteins exert something called colloid osmotic pressure. Colloid osmotic pressure wants to pull fluid towards you. Blood pressure wants to push it away. So down here at the arterial end, blood pressure is greater than colloid osmotic pressure, so fluid leaks out, carrying with it oxygen and nutrition. At the venous end, colloid osmotic pressure is greater than blood pressure, so fluid gets brought back in. So when fluid leaks out with oxygen and nutrition, each of these cells benefit, but also each of these cells have a waste product. And this waste product has to be taken away. And people don't think about it much, but your venous system actually hires or basically takes care of most of the waste products. But we have another area, 
We have energy drainage from the area, but also lymphatic drainage. So if I highlight this a little bit here, you can see the arterial flow is in red, venous is in blue, and we have the lymphatic in green. A lot of anatomy books don't do a very good job of this. They kind of forget the lymphatic system. So I would buy a good green sort of felt pen and start marking it in. Anywhere you see an artery or vein, put a lymphatic vessel there. So when I talked about fluid leaking out, let's say 30 liters were to leak out carrying oxygen and nutrition, at the venous end, probably about 27 liters would come back in this area. So we lose about three liters. So the lymphatic system is responsible for that excess fluid. And it is a secondary means for bringing fluid back to the heart. And I did the last time I was with Danelle, we did a lecture specifically on that. And they probably have a copy of it for you on the lymphatic system. So here's the drainage outflow, venous drainage, lymphatic drainage, energy drainage or energy circulation. Now there's a key phrase in osteopathy. It says drainage precedes supply. And this is a very important concept because in order for these cells to receive the oxygen and nutrition, to receive the energy flow, to receive the nerve flow, you have to take away the congestion. And that's what we talked about in that last little mini series. So that's why it's so important to do the manual therapy first around that shoulder releasing a lot of these barriers. And this allows that influx and outflex of these vital substances. Now you as a massage therapist can now realize how important your profession is because all the soft tissue work you do. Because if you look closely here, you can see in this cross section, the arteries, the veins and lymphatics in these tissues. And this is a beautiful shot right here you can see the arteries in red and blue, the veins and green and lymphatics, but you can see them here on the outside and this is all fascia, but I want you to pay attention here on the inside of the muscle. So it goes quite deep. So when you do your massage and start to open up, you know, these, um, oops, when you start to open up these particular areas, there we go, that you are freeing up the arterial flow, venous return, lymphatic return. So all this is very important for you. So the next thing that we want to talk about is what are the barriers to this pathway of healing? So we talked about this little model over here, how the heart sends blood, deoxygenated blood to the lungs, takes in oxygen, and this goes to the rest of the body, to the capillary network, which is over here. And if you look here, there's two ways for blood to get back to the heart, through the venous system and also through the lymphatic system. And we know now that this whole movement of fluid, inflow and outflow, is extremely important for the healing process. So our question is, what are the barriers to this? This is where our manual therapy comes in. This is where massage comes in, is understand, okay, what's important in the healing process and what could potentially get in the way? What do I have to focus on? So the first thing you want to think about is you can have a local barrier around, in this case, a shoulder dysfunction. So when we look at a shoulder, you could have protective muscle spasm in around the shoulder, you could have fascial tension, you could have joint hypermobility, you could have energy stagnation, you could have local swelling, you could have any one of these things stuck locally. Here's the problem we face right now, is our medical system is called also the Cartesian theory, the Cartesian medical system. It's also called reductionism. And basically they've divided the body up into sections. We have people that specialize in the cardiovascular system, uh, dermatology, respiratory. You're a specialist in the musculoskeletal region. And what happens is everybody's got their own little area and nobody kind of communicates in between. And this is why we have a problem here is that if you're treating, let's say a worker's compensation patient um, and they send a patient to me with a shoulder problem, they're going to say, okay, you have six visits, but you only can treat the shoulder because that's how the medical system sees things. If someone comes to you with a knee problem, they only want you treating the knee. The patient wants you treating that too. The doctor wants you treating there. The insurance company wants you treating there. But I'm going to show you that you could have potential problems coming in uh, from elsewhere. And this is what this lecture is about, is you could also have total body barriers for this. One of the things you have to be aware of is intercavity pressure. 
And if you look at this, the thorax is the area of greatest negativity. The abdomen has a higher pressure than the thorax and your uh, belly, your pelvic area is higher than your abdomen. Your head is higher than the thorax. So everything is geared to flow towards your chest. What's the number one killer out there? Heart disease. And I see so many patients of mine that are restricted in their respiratory diaphragm and also thoracic inlet, and they have a lot of tension in this area. But this area is critical. In Chinese medicine, I said the energy starts here and also flows back here. But this is also an important area for blood flow to be sent out to the rest of the body and also come back to this area. What sets these cavities? Your transverse diaphragms, your pelvic floor, your respiratory diaphragm, your thoracic inlet, and also your tentorium cerebelli, which is a horizontal fascia inside the cranium. If you only gave me or, or allowed me to do one technique uh, in treating somebody, it would be a transverse diaphragm. And if I were to pick one of these, it would be thoracic inlet because so many things flow back to this area. The reason why these are so important is they are transverse or horizontal and all the vital structures we talked about all run vertical. So these are so important to work with. And if we talk about that shoulder dysfunction, I would say the respiratory diaphragm and thoracic inlet would be the most important. The other ones are lines of fascial tension. This uh, picture here, which is all kind of shaded in, these are areas of fascial tension. But if they're coming in just with a shoulder dysfunction, you know, you may not take the time to look elsewhere in the body. But this person uh, has tension in this leg that's hooked up to this because that fascial system is all one continuous system. Also something happening in the cranium. And you can see that this fascia, which wraps around the outside, is also found around each individual uh, muscle bundle. So these lines of fascial tension from the legs, the arms, the head and neck, could be interfering with these supply lines and pathways of drainage, and also the functional mobility of that shoulder. So we have to look at that. So in this picture here, it shows you how the transverse diaphragms, uh, lines of fascial tension, affect all the physiological processes, arterial flow, venous return, lymphatic return, as well as energy. And then the fourth component is the autonomic nervous system, you know, which we talked about earlier. These are the things that I look at because of this vasomotion. This is the total body barrier. This is going to affect the supply line of healing. I can remember I had a woman um, she came to me and she had 10 years of headaches and she was from Montreal, Canada. And she told me her history and she was being treated chiropractically. Uh, she had physical therapy, she had massage and all of them basically worked around the head. They worked around the head and neck. She also had TMJ issues. When I lied her down uh, and did an evaluation, I, I always check people's legs, their arms, their head and neck. And I found a lot of tension down that left leg. And I asked her what happened here. And she goes, oh, she goes, I had like four operations of that foot. That was part of my car accident. She said 10 years ago, it kind of filleted that foot. So there was a line of tension. And you can see from this picture here uh, from this left foot pulling all the way up towards the cranium and creating this problem. When she lied on her back, I would stand at the head of the table and try to move her neck. I could hardly move it with her legs straight because there is that line of pull. As soon as I got her to bend that left knee, I could move that head and neck anywhere. And so I started to work fascially on that left leg, open it up, and we were able to restore that movement in one or two visits. And she just had tears coming down her eyes because, you know, those practitioners were basically focused on the area of complaint, not looking at supply lines, not looking at the total body patient. I've also had um, a baseball player, a pitcher, from the, uh, what was it, the Florida Gators. And he had the shoulder problem and he was a rookie coming in. I still see him to this day. And his, he went to like for about three months, different physical therapy clinics and that. They did ultrasound, electrical stimulation, rotator cuff exercises, still no better. And again, we looked at his whole body. It was his legs that were pulling in there. And I remember his dad was saying, when are you gonna touch his shoulder? And finally his son, I would say, just shut up dad, let him do his job. And I purposely didn't touch his right shoulder. I worked on his legs, opened up his pelvis, and we were able to restore his shoulder to a functional you know, range of motion. And he actually maintained training crap, and he's still with the team today. 
So we have, you would have got this uh, in uh, email. If not, it's in the mail. When I was earlier in my profession, uh, just like you, I, I was a course junkie. I took everything I could. And uh, I grew up basically uh, taking any class that Upledger gave. I studied all the cranial work. Uh, when Jean-Pierre Varel came in, I studied all the visceral. So I studied everyone. And I remember being in my office one day and a patient came in with low back pain and I didn't know what to do. I had too many techniques. And so it was crazy. I mean, I could have done Maitland technique, Carlton Bourne technique, fascia release, strain counter strain, muscle energy, um, somato emotional release, cranial, all sorts of different approaches. So this chart, which you have a copy of, Basically, I had to put all my thoughts together and I create a screening evaluation. I had to create something that would tell me where to go. I did a lecture on this. It was an hour lecture and it's a free lecture. And Jackie, who you just met earlier, will probably send you a link for it. I'd watch it because it's going to be a shortcut for you. If you're a new student or it doesn't matter if you're new or been practicing for a while, um, you need a good screening eval because that's how I caught that person with 10 years of headaches. It was that left foot caught it in the first five minutes. That baseball player caught it in the first five minutes. So in this screening examination, we're gonna do, it only takes five minutes to do. We screen the legs, we screen the arms, the head and neck, the diaphragms, the autonomic nervous system. We screen that whole area and you're like a lawyer, you're building a case. You know, Do they have enough evidence to support a total body treatment or enough evidence to support locally? So from your screening eval, if you find, oh, the pathways of healing are all intact, then you're gonna focus locally on that shoulder. Well, there's lots of things you can do to the shoulder. MB stands for muscle balancing. And I did a lecture on that. I think it's a, it was a free one hour one as well. Jackie put that down on our tab for them. Uh, fascial balancing, okay? Uh, FB is fascial balancing. How do you know that it needs fascial balancing? Or JB is joint balancing. LB is lymphatic balancing. And we have energetic balancing. So that um, total body screening eval class will dictate and, and, and basically go over all of these. Now, let's say your patient does meet the criteria for a total body treatment. And what you're saying basically is that if you were to treat this shoulder locally, it's not gonna be successful. I've treated over 30,000 patients. That's where this comes from. Is that if, you, if this person had diaphragms restricted, there's lines of tension coming all over the place, just like the lady with the headaches coming from that left leg, she was treated for 10 years. If you treat this shoulder and the supply lines are not intact, it's not gonna heal. How does the body heal? That's why we lectured it first. Blood supply, energy supply, nerve supply, but also the drainage. So this helps us make decisions. So if you decided that this person uh, needed total body balancing, you know, what is it? This is my teacher here, John Wernham. He taught classical osteopathy. He was 99 years old when I met him and he was still treating eight patients a day. Total body balancing is a total body evaluation and a five phase treatment approach. It uses long levers, right? Lever can be an arm, can be a leg. And basically this helps to relieve lines of tension throughout the whole musculoskeletal uh, system. It's very simple. They use the wedge, the lever and the screw. The wedge is where you palpate, right? And your hand can be passive or it can be active, okay? So you can see in this picture down here that my wedge hand is on the shoulder. In this picture here, the wedge hand is on the uh, upper thoracic spine. Then we have a lever. In this picture to the far left, it's the lower leg. In the middle picture, it's the arm. In the far right picture, it's the torso. So this lever, this fascial connection between your sensory hand and your motor hand what we're trying to do is we're trying to line up tension to stretch it up. And we use something called the screw. And the screw is this osteoarticular motion. We are evaluating three-dimensionally to find out where the tension is. So why is this total body balancing so important? Well, to maintain health and homeostasis, you need balance of all your tissues, right? We need tissue mobility. We need mobility and balance of our superficial and fascial system. We need it in our transverse diaphragms. We need it in our visceral fascia. We need it in our meningeal fascia, which is the cranial sacral system. And all this fascia is all interconnected. We also need to balance muscles, bones, and joints. We need a balance of the nervous system. 
We need a balance of circulation and energy flow and the autonomic nervous system. We call it total body balancing because we affect all these tissues. We affect the autonomic nervous system because of the rhythm that we do this in. It's almost like uh, rocking a baby to sleep or like a wave coming in and out. Our goal is to restore functional range of motion. We wanna create a new uh, balanced homeodynamic state. We believe that your body can heal itself. Your body is an intelligent body. If we can balance all these diaphragms, lines of tension in your autonomic nervous system, we put you in a better position for healing. So this is what it looks like. I got a couple of minutes here and I'll go through this. In supine, we're gonna use long levers on the legs and we're gonna stretch lines of tension. This is what I did with that lady with a headache, working on the legs. And then I can come up and work on the pelvis. You bend the knee and I now start to work on the pelvis and pelvic floor. I then come up and work lines of tension. I can use the arm in different positions to release tension that goes into uh, the torso and into the cranium. I can then open up the rib cage. I can then go down the arm and open up the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist and hand and create a nice stretch to that system. So I can work my way up one side of the body. Then I do the other side of the body. And at the end, I free up the head and neck. So it's um, this orthopedic model is like the skyscraper principle. You start at the base and you work your way up to the penthouse. So you do the neck at the end of this supine phase. And then we flip them over on their stomach. When they're on their stomach, we work our way from the bottom up again, because now we have different lines of tension. A lot of people are in this slump position. They have a lot of tension in the front of the body. So we release the legs, we release the arms. And also, once we freed up all the diaphragms and the tension in the front, this little picture here, we can tease out and begin to open up your uh, spinal cord and spine in that area. And then we get into a sideline position. And, and these look like you're manipulating, but you're not. This is all releasing lines of tension. It's all very gentle stretches and it's all following a nice rhythm. We lie the patient on the left side and then we lie them on the right side. And then finally, we get them in a nice seated position. And there's a reason why you know we work through all these different positions because there's different lines of tension in different positions. So we're always, the, the, the Cadillac or the, the, the gold standard would be to work people in all these positions because here's our, our TVB core pack. So in level one, which is the first one here, this is where we teach the full body evaluation and we teach these five phases that you go through. Level two and three are developed for those problem cases where I had a lady uh, three days ago she couldn't lie on her back. She couldn't lie on her stomach. She could lie on her side. So how did I treat her? In sitting. So in these two courses, we teach you how you can treat the whole body in prone, supine, sideline, and sitting. So we, and also it gives you lots of other techniques where you can free up um, any part of the body. We also give you a total body uh, evaluation reference guide and DVD. Here's my contact information if you have any uh, questions. And I'm sure Jackie's going to be sending out uh, information uh, to all of you. So I'm in Sarasota, Florida. And that's it. I think we got it in. Good. Great. So, uh, I, okay. I think I'm back on now. So you are. Thank you. I feel like half an hour is hardly long enough. That was no. <laughs> really interesting. And um, just everyone listening, this will be, this is recording and will be posted to our EduTalks um, link on biotone.com um, by the end of the week or Monday. Uh, Jackie, that left the meeting early, will follow up with an email with information from Carrie and more on Carrie over the next couple of days. I'd like to thank you all for participating and also watch your inbox, your email as well for upcoming invitations to our EduTalk series, November 24th. We have Ethical Practice Management. It is part two with Cherie Sonimo and Laura Allen. And December 8th, we will have CBD 101. 
with a full body CBD massage protocol hosted by Jane Irving. And December 15th, we will have 2021 trends for massage and spa, and that will be by Kelly Lenny. So thank you very much for attending tonight. We look forward to seeing you in the future. Um, Carrie, anything else in wrapping up? No, did Elise have anything to say or no? I think we're good. Okay, well, thank you for having me back and I look forward to coming back next year. Thank you and a quick reminder, Carrie did lymphatic ba balancing and that can be found at biotone.com forward slash edu hyphen talks. Thank okay. you everyone and good night. Good night. Thank you.